Welcome back to the channel, everybody. This is going to be a continuation of what we're doing for the whole month of January, which is kind of looking at some of the more basic stuff of rock hounding, seeing if we can do something better. And I'm going to share with you what uh, I, my opinions on some of this stuff. Today's video, we're going to be talking about rock hounding tools, which is a subject that I love. Now, as somebody that likes tinkering with stuff and projects and working on homes and welding and all that stuff, I love a good set of tools. And I think what I have kind of set up in a system that works well for us might also work well for you. Now, there's no way to have this conversation without first kind of laying a bit, a little bit of groundwork. I'm not talking about hard rock mining. I'm talking about rock hounding. Now, there's overlap, of course, but I'm talking about walking beaches and picking up rocks, walking creeks and picking up rocks, road cuts, uh, places where you might do a little bit of hard rock, where like you're, you're chiseling out some rocks. We're not really getting into... Uh, very site-specific stuff, because the way we travel, we might be taking an eight-hour road trip and stopping at a beach on a river or lake. We might be walking up a creek, looking at a road cut, going to a dedicated rock hounding spot where I might have to do some digging, any combination thereof. And I think I have a nice little kit put together that handles all of that stuff really well. That said... If you're going to be going someplace where you're going to have to be moving a lot of material, a lot of rock, a lot of dirt, obviously you're going to bring tools for that specific location. Or if you live on the coast and you just want to walk up and down a beach and pick up rocks that you find, you need basically nothing to do that. So that said, um, let's, let's move you in here and we'll start talking about some tools. So I think one of the things that is going to be very individual is going to be your bag. This happens to be my backpack right here. You don't have to have this backpack. You can use any backpack that works well. And uh, this just so happens to be a 511 quad zip bag. That doesn't really matter, though. What matters is that no matter what, every day hike, everywhere that I go, I have these basic tools on me on the outside. I have a rock hammer. I'll be taking this off here so I can show you a little more up close. And inside my bag, I have a tool pouch. This right here. Having a rock hammer is important. Now, this happens to be an S-Wing rock hammer, which these are very, very lovely, lovely tools. Now, Reasons you would want this. Breaking rocks, prying rocks. Now imagine a rock face and you want to use this, get in there and pry. This here is not a chisel. This is not meant to smash rocks in half. You can do it, okay, but in doing so, you will chip out your hammer and wear it down quicker than necessary. But you can do it. Highly recommended to always have a rock hammer on you for all of your adventures, you know? Now, my beloved little tool pouch. We're going to jump into this. There's a lot of little things in here that make my rock hounding a lot more enjoyable. None of which, like I said before, none of which are really super necessary. But I think if you put this kit together like this... Uh, and you have this, plus some of the other stuff we'll be showing you, you're going to be super, super happy. Okay. Obviously, it's a little Klein tool pouch. And this is, you know, it's pretty lightweight. Like, I can just pinch it, pick it up. So right on top, I have a pill bottle. This pill bottle has a magnet on a string. Now, why would you want a little rare earth magnet on a string? Well, testing to see if rocks are magnetic. Very, very lightly magnetic rock there. Little tool, nice to have. As of right now, as I film this in January, 
this light is sold out. I think uh, because of the videos here, that they're empty. But what we have here is a 365 nanometer UV light. Um, after coming to the realization that I have plenty of really cool ultraviolet light reactive fluorescent minerals in the areas that I go, I added the UV light to my little tool pouch. Back a pair of gloves. The little hand trowel. This is just a little Fisker's hand trowel. You can get these online. You can get them at hardware stores, Home Depot, all of that stuff. Great for scraping rock, moving small amounts of dirt, uh, cleaning off specimens, things like that. Now, here's something that is important, okay? We just talked that using your rock hammer to break rock will damage your rock hammer over time, but little tiny chisel, right? This is the way you want to be breaking rock. You want to be using a chisel and not using your rock hammer, if at all possible. I carry a little tiny loop with me. Just like this. And this is actually a, a really nice little one. It does have a light and UV, even though the, the batteries are dead in it right now. Uh, but this is also kind of cool for taking photos with your phone. I'm going to put in a photo right now where I held this up to my camera on my phone and then took a photo and it, it, it comes out pretty good, pretty good. So that's fun. You know, I mean, we go camping a lot and uh, rock hounding, so it's fun to be able to look at your finds in the evening. I carry a little brush. This is just a little, uh, brass brush you can buy these in multi-packs over at harbor freight and uh they're nice for cleaning dirt off of your stuff seeing if you're on the right path to uh well whatever it is you want to collect it's nice to see especially sometimes you'll get um light mineralization that you want to rub off uh like calcite or just like really crusty dirt and you want to see what's underneath there it's always a good thing to have Right here, <laughs> another Harbor Freight special. This is a little, I believe it's a 12 inch pry bar. So between this, these things right here, these three, you can uh, you can move some move some material actually. Something that's a little bit new to me. I have a pair of hobby tweezers, right? Picking little things up, little rocks. Uh, imagine, you know, you're sluicing, you're doing different things and you want to pick little crystals, gems out of matrix, out of sand. Great little pair of tweezers for that. All right, a couple of uh, thrift store butter knives. Now, what do you want some butter knives for? Well, a butter knife is extremely thin, right? So sedimentary rocks, uh, fossils, where you might want to split it perfectly. And uh, well, some sedimentary rocks that are going to be soft, right? You pound these in to between two layers for, you know, gathering fossils, things like that. And you can split that or at least open it up enough to put your little pry bar in there, right? Now, here's my two favorite tools, probably. Well, two favorite little hand tools in the pouch. I have two screwdrivers, right? I have a little short, cheapy screwdriver and uh, popping rocks out of the, like, you know, uh, popping rocks out of matrix, things like that. There's a million uses for getting in there with a more precision tool and popping things out. And then I took a Phillips screwdriver, heated up the tip, and I bent it. This uh, I've been using more and more and more through my rock hounding for uh, kind of getting into little things and popping stuff out. I use this tool uh, a lot, actually. So there's that. Um, I'm going to put all this stuff back in the little tool pouch, and I got some more things to show you. So that's the contents of this little tool pouch, and obviously the fabulous S-Wing rock hammer. Now, everywhere that I've ever been, I think I've only used a shovel 
twice. So I don't use a shovel because it seems like I'm always digging in soil that is like at best uh, 20% dirt and 80% rock. So I uh, my go-to is this. This is the Estwing Geo Pick. You have a pick on one end and kind of a more flat spade side and uh, it's lightweight. It's just the right size. And uh, this is what I mostly use for clearing dirt or if I have something that I wanna pry out that this will not get that done, this will almost definitely get that done. And I don't really feel the need for a, a bigger pick or a shovel because of this, because of everything that I do, it's just in rock, not really uh, starting new big holes where you're clearing large amounts of overburden. Now that said, there are times when I could see a shovel being useful, but for the most part, when I'm looking at hitting many different spots in a weekend, as an example, this is the, the thing that I use for that. All right, this little bucket right here. Um, uh, I gotta, before we get into what's in this bucket, I wanna talk about buckets. Now, I hate a five gallon bucket. I despise them. I'm talking about your Home Depot, Walmart, Lowe's, five gallon bucket. They are too big. They have terrible handles. The little handle on them breaks. It's just a dreadful thing that I want to see disappear in society for the most part. That said, uh, I still use a bucket. <laughs> um, this right here is a two gallon feed bucket. All right, so it has a flat, flat side, and this is meant to feed animals. So the plastic is significantly more durable. You know, it's meant to be like you hang this on a fence post and an animal's head goes in here, right? So we have a wire handle that is significantly bigger wire than what you'd have on a five gallon bucket. And the plastic is heavier. It's got a nice little flat side on it. And I took the handle off and I put this piece of garden hose on it so that it's a nice handle to hold. And they're more expensive. This bucket, I think I got it at a feed supply for $9. Now, versus what, like $4, $4 or so for a five-gallon bucket? This lasts forever. I've burnt through so many five-gallon buckets because they're not UV stable. They break down in the sunlight if you leave them out. The handles break. The wire on the handle breaks. Uh, the little plastic ring thing that spins is just terrible. Anyways, that's enough me ranting about five gallon buckets. This is a superior bucket, right? Two gallons of rock is plenty rock for a location. You probably don't need more. If you need more, you can make multiple trips or you can have two of these, one in each hand walking back. Having the little flat side up against where you walk, the bucket doesn't bang into you as much. It's just a superior thing, all right? So, in the bucket, a pair of knee pads. Now, maybe you're young and walk, crawling around on your hands and knees on rocks and in the dirt, doesn't bother you. I'm almost 40, it bothers me. I have a pair of knee pads that I bring out with me. So if I'm on my hands and knees, digging in a pile, chipping away, doing whatever, I put these on and it's so much nicer. Right? A pair of knee pads. Got to have a water bottle, right? A lot of places that I go rock hounding, there's not ample supply of water sitting around to uh, clean off your rocks. Having a little squirt bottle to see what you got going on under that dirt is really nice. And of course, uh, don't lick rocks. Now, for times in which your rock hammer and that little chisel you carry with you isn't gonna cut it, these will cut it. Now, this is a two pound hand sledge. Uh, this one just so happens to be the fiberglass handled S-wing. And then uh, this is a Dasco chisel, but they're all basically the same. But having the hand guard on here, right? So when you miss, you don't smash your knuckles, smash your thumb is amazing, right? If you're gonna be chiseling at stuff, Having this is awesome. Now, I wouldn't recommend you carry this little three pound hand sledge and uh, this around. It's more like 
you know that you are going to be using these, um, don't go on a hike with this unless you really know that you're going to use it because it gets heavy quick. But, uh, man, you can, uh, you can move a mountain with this. At, well, at least it feels like it. All right. There is so much cool geology and mineralization in road cuts. Now, for the most part, a road cut is considered a free-for-all. Yes, the state owns them, depending on your state. They may or may not like you stopping and taking their, their rocks, our rocks, I guess, people's rocks. But um, even in places where it is allowed, it's not looked upon highly because you're stopping your vehicle on the side of the road. Uh, it may not always be the safest. There's certainly not a place where you want to, like, get out, hang out, let the dog out, let the kids out, that stuff. So, here's the thing. Here is my safety nerd vest. Now, there's a couple of things. <laughs> if you have on a reflective vest, a hard hat, and have a clipboard, now I'm not saying you need those things, but just hypothetically, a non-rock hunting situation, nobody will ever question you. It is an all-access pass to the world, those three things. When you stop your car and you get out and you throw this on and you're standing on the side of the road and you're looking at rocks, gathering rocks, nobody thinks twice. Now, for the most part, okay? Nobody's going to question the person with a reflective vest on the side of the road picking up some rocks. It's just not going to happen. People see this and they think you're supposed to be there it's acceptable for you to be there, and that's that. Also, uh, during hunting season, I, where I live, people go hunting, okay? Um, I often have on my hood, so having just the, the knit cap does not give enough orange. I can throw this on over my coat, and, uh, well, I won't get blasted by someone. All right, that kind of, uh, kind of covers it. Now, like I said before, you could get some more big hard rock mining tools, big pry bars, angolo bars, uh, that type of stuff. But when you see all of this kind of together, it's a nice compact system that will let you gather rocks and it'll get done almost anything. I'm going to put all this stuff back together and then you can see how tight and compacted it is. Here it all is, all together. Not exactly a burden to have, not a burden to bring with you. And uh, you could put together multiples of these for different people in your family if that's uh, what you chose to do. Now, another consideration that I have in setting all of this up is I also bring a lot of camera gear with me, right? So I'm really trying to be uh, very conscious of my weight, especially since we often walk pretty far. But this will uh, get the job done, people. So I know this is a little bit of a longer video. I appreciate you sticking with me to the very end here. I hope you maybe learned a couple of things. If you have any advice for me, definitely drop it down in the comments down below. I love hearing with, from you guys, connecting over things and all of that good stuff. And since you've made it this far, if you could please hit the thumbs up button it doesn't take that much, and it helps me out a lot, and it lets me know that you like this content. So, until the next one, everybody, uh, have a good one, and uh, good luck rock hounding.